Uh, we're here doing some uh, ham radio modifications this evening. It's the um, Yesu. Yesu radios, the yeah. FT60s. FT60s. Uh, game plan is to do the uh, Mars Cat, uh, Cat yep. Mars modification. Uh, it's not technically legal for you to transmit outside of the amateur bands that you're allowed to be in if you're a technician or a general or uh, a uh, what is it extra now or is it? I believe extra. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, we, if you want to do this, you can. We're not saying you should or you shouldn't, but uh, we're doing it just because if we, we spend a lot of time in the woods, whether it be hunting outdoors, quad riding, this or that. If we get in an emergency and be I have to, you know, really be able to talk to somebody, reach out to somebody, one of our buddies that have uh, the FRS radios, the little handhelds, um, or uh, what's the other ones? The uh, GMRS. GMRS is one of them, uh, which you do need a separate license for. But in the event of emergency. Most hunters, most people still have the GMRS, the FRS radios. This allows you to get a hold of them in the case that something bad goes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at any rate, we have uh, a couple FT60s here, Yesus, and I have a Yesu uh, VX8DR. I'll show you guys later uh, for that modification. But let's get into this, and we will uh, we'll pull this apart, show you how to do it, um, and I think it does void. Your warranty. It does void it, and just so you know, you do this at your own risk. We are not responsible for anything that you mess up. If you turn it into a brick, <laughs> that's your brick. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking that uh, there's there's a lot of people that said you need to have a um, uh, heat gun and or a you know soldering iron and things like that. That's probably most of the time how you brick the radio. There's a way to do this without, uh, I think, without damaging the radio. So we'll get into it, and we'll show you that here in a second. Okay, we're back here with the. Uh, FT60. Uh, we did take off a couple things so far. So the the buttons have to come off. The antenna comes off. Uh, your two buttons just pop off. Uh, the battery's out, and the belt clip is removed. Make sure the ring for the uh, oh yeah the rings off come well. off. Yeah, the, the those have to come off. And then inside uh, of the volume and your uh, other no what is it, squelch Squelch's knob, yep. uh, there's two rubber seals, and those have to come out. So you can either use a little screwdriver and kind of pull them up. It looks like Tom has a little bit of his lunch in here. and So these two little rubber seals have to come out. Just saving some for later. Yeah. And then uh, I guess, uh, yeah, this one here. Pull that one out. Once those are pulled out, we'll set those down on the table. Underneath those, there's two little... Uh, nuts to go on to um, the top of those knobs and you'll see them down there best thing to use is uh, like a little flat screwdriver real tiny one and just kind of you know lefty loosey until it comes loose and then just spin it around which takes takes a couple seconds they, I think they make a tool to do this but we're used to <laughs> we're used to working with less whatever we can do to work with less yeah, right? yeah. Make it harder, make the job harder. So we'll pull this one off. There it is, you can show them that, Tom. I'll get the other one out while you're doing that. This little guy right here. So we pull these out, and that's gonna make it, and make you be able to loosen up the radio. You only need a uh, uh, Phillips screwdriver, a razor blade, a little flat screwdriver, and uh, I think that's about all you need to do this job. Yeah, so the rings at the top are actually helping to hold the case together. Uh, without removing those, you can't get the case apart. Um, the second part of this... So those are out, and those rings uh, sit right in there. I don't know if it's going to focus or not. Keep but too close, yeah. That's all right. Well, either way, uh, two Phillips screwdrivers to hold the belt clip on. Those are two Phillips screws to hold the belt clip on. Then there's four screws in the back of the radio. These two down here, and then two up in this corner. So we're gonna pull those out real quick as well. Those are kind of tight. Could use a cheaper screwdriver. I could. <laughs> um, do we have a... I wonder if this is gonna work here. Cut. We'll get the two top ones out first. They're really small, so you want to set them on something. We're just using a... Yeah, make sure you have a good screwdriver. You don't want to strip the screws out. Um, that's no fun. I don't know where you would find something like this as he tries to strip the screw out. Oh, it's just tight from that uh, muscle glue that's in there. Yeah, muscle glue. 
Oh, uh, man. So we'll pull these, uh, this screw out. We probably already bricked the radio, so it's no big deal. <laughs> it doesn't turn on. Thanks, afterwards. this one's mine, you know. Uh, the one thing, uh, when this is done, uh, your radio will be like factory reset, so you'll have to either reload your uh, programming. If you're using Chirp, make sure you back it up first. Uh, I do have all my stuff backed up, so I'm not worried about this. If at any point you're afraid to do this, Go buy the cheap Balfang and just Tom, be done see with if it. you can pull that screw out <laughs> without stripping it because I'm I don't want to. I got the one out, but I, yeah, I, I thought we used a different screwdriver the last time, but we used a little straight, didn't we? Let's see if I can. That's what I thought we did, but. I can see if I can get us a different one. I don't know if it'll work. I got it. Did you? Yeah, leave it to muscles. All right, so now that those are out, we're getting those getting those going. Best thing to use for this job uh, versus heating it up with an iron. Uh, what are those things called? Why do I keep calling them irons? I think like soldering iron. Soldering iron. Yeah. Okay. Uh, little razor blade that works best because this resistor on here is small. We almost took the like, wrong one off. Really, really <laughs> small. Yeah. If you take the wrong one off, you will brick the radio. Uh, while Tom's pulling that apart, you got to kind of pull out and down. Yeah. Well, there's that. While he's doing that. This FT60 we've already done, and uh, it's I'm breaking. Only stuff being here. so careful because it's mine. Yeah. Uh, something else you can do with an FT60 while he's pulling that apart is you run this little wire here, this counterpoise wire on your antenna with just a little electrical connector here. I forget what number this is. Uh, something like that. And all you do is just run that right on your antenna, underneath your antenna. I'm using a Diamond uh, SRH77CA. It's probably the best antenna. Very flexible uh, for on the go. Uh, but this will definitely help you uh, reach a little further, be a little bit clearer, things like that. So I definitely suggest uh, cutting a piece of wire and, and doing that modification as well. Do you want me to show you how to do that? Sure. <laughs> Don't break it. Let me it. show you how to break it. Uh, yeah, so we got everything out. Why there. is mine like super tight? Because you got a seal. So you pull it out, just pull it apart. Um, you got to kind of pull uh, down and out so you don't snap off your knobs. Once it's opened up, there's not much to the, uh, the front of it, so we'll set that down. And the next step is to identify. The resistor. Yeah, the resistor. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to get a close up here. We're gonna try to get a close up here and show you. We can see if we can uh, stop this and start with the start zoomed in here. So we're trying to get the shot here for you guys. The resistor that has to come off is actually right here, right at the bottom of the screwdriver. And the key thing you gotta see is this res this chip up here. Yeah, those two. It's right off the bottom left. Right there at right the tip there. of the razor blade. And the, yep. yep, so we're going to pull that off. And we'll show you how we do that. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know if you'll see this, but the best thing I've found to do is get a really sharp razor blade. Is that in focus, Tom? Uh, it's focused, yeah. Not very close, but it's there. And just keep picking away at the middle of that little resistor. And boom. No, wait, that was the wrong one. No, it wasn't. Oh my god. <laughs> so if you pick away at it, uh, there. And it, you, you're not going to even see it. It's it's gone. Um, I think it's that spec. I, I can't really tell where it went, but I tried to save them the last time. So uh, do you want to get another close up yeah, and see? Sure. Show them which one's missing. Get some. Alright, so the one that we took out. Uh, in the view here is it's hard to do this with the razor blade but right there so you'll see there's a little gap there between those two contacts and that's removed so that's about okay, it okay so we're back now um, so we pulled the resistor off everything should be good to go now we just gotta put the radio back together uh, we'll do a little test once we get back together so all you do is uh, slide the radio back up in now the other thing that's going to help you, I forgot to tell you guys, 
to take this off so it doesn't uh, get held up. Pull these two rubber uh, rubber pieces. Oh, that wouldn't come off. Yeah, <laughs> just pull those out, like twist it sideways uh, on the radio. If you guys can see that, just turn that rubber piece sideways that protects the ports. We'll make sure that this O-ring is seated back in uh, in place. And once that's in place, it'll it'll get uh, it'll get crushed here as we put this radio back together. So we're just gonna go in. We got the seal on this side first. All right, you're good. Good. You're gonna push it down here. Yeah. In and up until it pops back together. Make sure your seal's good the whole way around, which should be. Um, and other than that, uh, Tom, we didn't show them to you. Uh, yeah, you take the clip off the bottom. The clip that holds the battery that. in. Um, you got to pull that out. When you start pulling the radio part, and I'll see if I can show you a little closer. When you start pulling the radio part, you have to slide this clip out that holds the battery in. So before you put your radio back together and put all the screws in, slide that back into the tray, and it just kind of floats in there. Uh, and once it's slid back in, well, drop dropped it. I'll grab that here for a second. Once that's slid back in, then you can kind of squeeze the radio back together and it won't come out again. So there we go. So that's in. Everything's back together. Uh, what we'll do is probably put uh, the two small screws back in first. We'll get that done. They're really tiny, but I'm going to go to love it. Most of you will probably have the right size screwdrivers and all that stuff but we have tools everywhere right now so let's just work with what we have and so we get these two small screws in most people are probably uh, going to the next video by now on YouTube because they're, out of their minds. they're putting theirs already back back together because they got the right tools but they won't they'll miss the surprise at the end or this is the part yeah. where they turn it back on and it doesn't work yeah that can happen too so this is uh this is live so i'm only a little confident because he's done two of them before yeah so as long as we got the right right resistor we should be fine we'll tighten this down here in a second Those screws are a little bit tight to put in because of, uh, I think they have a little bit of like a Loctite or something on them just to seal the radio and tighten it up a little bit. If you want to, you can put this in a vise. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe after really it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we should be good. Do Everything a quick looks test good. here. Radius uh, tightened down. So what we'll do is we'll just throw the antenna on real fast so it has a load and we'll throw the battery in real real quick here. Clip it on and then just uh, turn the radio on. So uh, radio is on and as you can see it's, uh, well you can't see it but uh, it's reset so there's no settings in there so we can just hit our local repeater. You do have some. Oh, you probably have to put the turner back on tone and everything. All my PL codes are all messed up. Yeah. So, like I said, if you have chirp. Here. And one of those repeaters that we've used before, 462, 662. No, that's one of the FRS channels. Yeah. So, right now, like if you just hit that, even though it's, it's we don't have any of the PL codes or anything in, but. Uh, if you hit it, you could see normally it would say error on the screen. Now it's now it's actually able to transmit if you need it to. So uh, that's pretty much it. So now it's just button up the rest of the radio. So we'll turn this, turn this back off here. Pull the antenna off. Uh, I think the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, self yeah, self-explanatory. Pop the uh, caps on the top and um, put your uh, belt loop back on, belt loop clip, clip, and you should be. Uh, should be good to go, but I think it's a lot easier to do with the the razor blade, and uh, then then using then heating it up and, and messing with the circuitry. Because if you if you get it too hot and you melt something, then you just tossed a hundred and seventy five dollar radio. The resistor is really too small to use a heat gun or anything like that on. So 
yeah, as you said, the razor blade, it's your best bet. Um, just make sure, you know, we'll post a picture if we can, um, show you exactly which one you need.